Hello and welcome to another trailer breakdown. Today we're looking at the brand new trailer released as part of the THQ Nordic Showcase. So tuck yourself in as this will probably be a rather long breakdown. This trailer seems to cover a lot of the aspect of the living world of Adelpha. From taming animals, to using them as a vehicle, to, to weaponry, to a closer look at how the enemies work within this world as well. And some very quick blink and you'll miss it facts that reveal more about the elusive island of Kazar. This trailer starts with zooming in to the piece of artwork we saw at the end of the last trailer that took place in Mars Shop of Antiquities. In fact, you could probably slice together the end of the last trailer and this one for a nice continuous talk from Ma. He goes on to say, I taught him that every choice counts. The choices he made changed his life and ours. He remembered Adelpha as a vast and beautiful ecosystem where every living being had its place and its purpose. But the invaders brought Sankra, Quick side note, Sankra is when the four elements of the Adelphan world have a dominance on one another in a certain pattern, creating the bad times, or at least that's their way of understanding it. To our world and disconnected us from each other. You see, it's not enough to climb every tower as you might do on Earth. A beautiful bit of shade to the Assassin's Far Cry world there. <laughs> One must uncover how everything in our world is part of a whole. The many hidden relations that connect all living things on Adelpha in perfect harmony. He discovered our secrets, learned how to nurture our creatures, nourished our plants to understand that they only grew together, and he learned to influence the delicate system for the better. The more effort he put in, the greater the impact. A true hero starts his journey at any place he chooses and eventually makes a difference everywhere he goes, by influencing the balance, supporting the resistance, and defying the invaders with just the right strategy. Now, this is a very interesting sentence because you've got two very key elements here that I feel are going to be a big part in how each player plays the game. Now, just like the first outcast, you can approach how you tackle the main story at any stage you want. In the first game, each region had its quest that built towards the end game, and you could go to any region and start that quest. There wasn't a specific sequence of which region you had to tackle first. You could just dive in and explore and experience the world as you liked. And it seems like that's a key feature in Outcast A New Beginning. Secondly, we have this supporting the resistance part of this line. Again, in the previous game, we had the Dolotai Guardians who were kind of doing their own little things to try and push back at the opposing force of Fei Ran. In that game, it was a human influence who had come down and controlled a large uh, influential part of the Talan population, creating his own hierarchy of soldiers that fought for him. Now, in this game, it seems like the invaders are fully robotic and there is no need to have the Talan on their side. So the resistance movement in this game is probably going to be a far bigger push than it was in the original Outcast. So I imagine a key part of A New Beginning will be trying to weasel your way into this resistance movement to help them out in the bigger fight. In return, our planet would grant him the powers of the Yods. Again, this is just a, a flavorful way of saying the power of the gods, which we see examples of in this video and the B-roll as well. But you can't become a citizen of Adelpha and change our world without it changing you as well. I wonder if this line was more aimed at the audience rather than Cutter, as he's a changed man from the first game already. But maybe there's even bigger hijinks afoot that will really make Cutter go native. Now the true start of this trailer is a couple of shots from, I guess, other stages of the trailer. Stopping on this frame, we can clearly see a few things going on. We have the mountain of Procriano in the distance, and we seem to be flying through this field of beautiful colours that aren't just in the flowers, but in the trees as well. Almost like a coral reef kind of effect, with the way these branches twist and turn compared to their greener counterparts. And looking up to the sky, we can see a large patrol of vehicles, which we'll be further focused on later on in this trailer. 
but keep them in mind. We then have this beautiful shot of the skyline of the city of Desan in the region of Saar, which seems to start with this canyon biome. Desan will truly be a key city of this game. In fact, if you make your vision blurry, you could almost mistake these desert spires for skyscrapers. Now, looking to the right a little bit, you will see uh, what looks like an island out to sea with a strange blue glow coming up from it. Now, we will be looking further into this, but that, I believe, is the island of Kizar. And the blue beam, well, there's something interesting going on with that. Let's, let's continue. The next shot, while quick, is actually quite interesting. We see Cutter launching through the air without the aid of his jetpack, as he seems to be following this strange blue stream, which is flowing towards this octopus plant looking thing with what looks like a waypoint behind it. Now, later on in the trailer, I think we actually see the origins of this strange levitating plant. And this stream that he's following might be revealed in the B-roll footage, but we'll have to wait and see. But this interesting absence of a jetpack use in this shot makes me wonder if there will be parts to this map where the jetpack goes offline almost if there's too much, I don't know, magical aura or something like that in the area, meaning we have to traverse on foot or take giant bounds like this using Adelpha's natural mysterious flora, as this path looks like it could be a rocky one up the mountain of Procriana. We then cut to Cutter strolling through this beautiful coral forest, with again that mountain of Procriana in the distance, which I think is going to be a great compass marker for this trailer. We also have these strange beams that were covered earlier in some trailers and the footage from last year's Gamescom, a strange and mysterious plant that seems to send the wildlife a little crazy. We then have this slight framing where I believe we must have the beach behind us, as you can tell by the sand, and we'll get a little look at how we see these creatures in the wild that appeared in the first reveal trailer. And looking at the distance, I can't help but be reminded of the original Outcast 2 sequel that we got cancelled back in 2001. Those more greener spires look so familiar. We have not seen these towers anywhere else in the game. And the fact that there might be a beach behind us does support the theory of this being maybe a little island somewhere, which, if we look to the original map video, to the bottom right of the map that sprang off from the region of Saar. Our focus then shifts to this shanty town that we've seen in a few clips and photos here and there. However, for the first time, we can see that it's actually populated. I did wonder if this place had been abandoned or some sort, and hence why I gave it the name of Shanty Town. But here we can see the Talana in, in positions of worship. We've got prayer flags flowing between the houses like you have in, in Dasan. And by going on the, the weather and, and the, the big mountain in the background, I'm going to guess that this is at the basin of the Procriana mountain. Next up, we're presented with a Daoka that seems to be activating. This also is very likely the one we saw before with Cutter and the presumed Shamars coming out of. What's interesting is that we actually see the other side to the Daoka. I'm not sure if this is just for this cutscene or this will actually be an element inside of the game as that's quite an interesting little bit of processing going on. Now, if I had to guess what this was, I would imagine that this is just the cutscenes we get when we activate a Daoka, which originally I thought there would only be a handful of, but it looks like we've got two handfuls of Daokas, which we will dive into a little later. What is interesting is that we have these old looking statues on either side holding up this symbol. Are these the presumed ancients that once roamed Adelpha and were cast away by the Yods, as they're looking a little too fancy as to what we know of the Talan? As Cutter descends one of the towers in the shantytown, we see what could be a UFO! But he ascends this tower using the multiple boost feature of the jetpack. I can't remember in my gameplay last year if you could use the jetpack, let's say just hold down the button to launch up and it would just continuously burst up or if you have to ascend this way in this kind of multiple jumps. The b-roll footage does go into how you can move around with the jetpack so we'll leave further discussions until then. But going up we see some symbols that look very similar to the element ones we've seen before with a couple of more details. So if I had to go on my knowledge, this would be the water element, Elwi, but with some dots. So water and dots, 
snow element? All right, it's now time for look at this big open world map thing that shows pathways, symbols, Doka symbols, and just everything. Uh, let's, oh God, let's dive in. So if we take this icon to being the Doka icon, we can see that, well, just here there is, what's that, one, two, three, four, uh, there's probably more, <laughs> I think. But the main things to highlight here are building structures, which I don't know if that will be highlighted or revealed as you go and, and find these places. I hope so. So on the left, we can see one of the fabled temples. But as we hover on this area of the map, we can see this yellow border that seems to be Ema. That is the whole area of Ema. Now, if you don't remember, Ema is the home of the fruit pickers, where you'll have these platforms and bridges that are all over the dense tree region. And as we zoom in, we get this breakdown of what seems to be how we train and raise a Galenta. Fabian, if you could just leave a comment on how to actually pronounce the Galenta. Yeah, thanks. But as you can see, and kind of like I mentioned before, there is always a freedom as how to go about finishing a mission. On this screen, you can follow the arrows in the direction to see what I mean. We can start from happiness, food, repelled Kamini and destroy drones to all go towards further elements that will end in this Galinta flight. Well, a far more in-depth version of this is with the Desan map, which, well, here you can see <laughs> there's all sorts of, of things to do here. And it all seems to be, again, having this larger element of raising and using these uh, larger creatures. These ones are called Nom Noms. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that one right. So there is a lot going on in this game. In the original Outcast, the, the main mission was to collect these mons, these computer cards that would then help fix the ride home. But to be able to progress through that, you had to help the locals with their problems. And well, as we can see here, it's, it's a far more in-depth version of that. If we take the WFA invasion as kind of Cutter's main reason why he's there uh, to overthrow that, we can see that inclusion inside of this mission structure. And that seems to be the main focus of the Desan area is this WFA infiltration. But that takes into account helping Zanit over here, Drad, Drad here, Makan. Uh, involves, yeah, raising these nom noms, using them probably in the assault to free the prisoners that are there as well. It's, it's all rather interesting. And in case you're wondering, the nom noms, I'm, I'm pretty sure, are these stingray looking creatures. We then have a farmer to land on a Twanha who seems to be shepherding some, some bon bars. The sheep cattle things of, of the outcast world. Now, even though this shop may not have a lot going on, other than these beautiful dense trees of, I'm guessing, Ema, of the surrounding area, we do have a couple of little birds that go flying off, which this is a large part for me that is important to a living world, is that there is detail down to small birds like this that maybe just fill the landscape up, but it really makes a world feel alive. We then get a, a big reveal, which I don't think had been included in any of the material that has been released for Outcast A New Beginning so far, but we see Cutter dive underwater in the murky swamps that lead into the Talan city in Ema. Now, of course, swimming underwater was an element of the original Outcast, which for its time was quite impressive. But now in the, the grand year of 2023, we can have these beautiful underwater areas of of murkiness and, and just vegetation and you can just apply that to imagine that yeah we're going to be able to do this all over the island but in this shot we have two of these presumed ventilopes spraying on some vegetation that's bringing life back to nature and we have to sort of go back to that intro line nourished our plants which this could be the nourishing going on a little bit of nosh Further things to look at is this pathway that we can see curls up this tree in the background. Now this is something that I broke down in one of the other trailers, that these pathways are used by Cutter to kind of grind along up these paths. So I imagine these are just sort of heads up display things for Cutter rather than actually being a physical thing that everyone could see. We've also got some lovely purple and green tinted clouds, I love that detail. Cutting back to the Galenta is a little older now and you can see Cutter is indeed training it as a, a Talan sits upon it, getting it used to being ridden. And then when it's full size, it, it seems to be as stiff as a plank. But let's have a quick look at the distance because we have a beautiful view of Procreana and a, a canopy that seems to be a bit further in the distance as well. Lovely. 
We then get the mission structure for Bidda, which was the main focus of the Gamescom coverage last year. And part of the mission structure is taking down a Alpha Garonda, which again was that big wormy beast thing that we saw in the gameplay last year. But we can also see that these, these beasts can then be trained, I guess, and we'll, we'll, we'll give a little bit of a, a, a push towards this, this Yod power of anti-gravity. We then follow the path of this challenge tracker to get this anti-gravity and it takes us up to the, the small collections of buildings and destroyed buildings in the mountains of Procreana. And it seems I was right in thinking there was an additional building, except I had a much smaller idea in mind. Now this is the location of the destroyed library, but there is also this larger building that seems to be a museum, which is the location of the museum that Ma talks to us from. And it seems that we're going to be grabbing Oru's gun from him. Now, Oru was a hunter who met his timely death in Outcast, and he had this wooden gun that we had to sort of get ammo for and everything so he could come out and hunt with us in the original game, which we now seem to need to use for this anti-gravity weapon. And it looks like we have the return of Recreators. These were Talans you could find in every settlement in Outcast, and they would create ammo for you, upgrade your guns, Really handy little chaps to have around. And finally, at the bottom of this list, we do indeed have the confirmation I was looking for that we indeed have to activate the Dokers around the map. But interestingly, there seems to be cores of these Dokers that we'll need to find to activate them. So there is a little bit more going into it than just flicking a switch. Now, this is one of the big moments of the trailer for me as we see this rather uh, innocent looking hut get built up over time. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is in Desan because of the terrain and there's there's nothing out in the window. There's just there's just sky, so we're pretty high up. And there's a weird creature just outside to the right, which I'm pretty sure is one of the nom noms. But as this collection grows, we can see map scrolls, uh, broken down drones, some some figurines on the table. But to the right, we have the map of Outcast A New Beginning. That's right, we now have the streamlined, probably final version of what this world will look like. And of course I did my thing and quickly mocked up with the old map to, to give us a better understanding of what it looks like. Pretty cool. But if we take notice to the left on this board, we can see these spheres. Uh, these kind of look like the ones that were in that destroyed library in Procreana. Are these Doga cores? No idea, just throwing that out there. Anyway, Going back to Ema, we then see this slow transition of time. As Cutter helps out getting rid of the WFA, we can see that indeed life is coming back to Adelpha. From recreator shacks to the actual wildlife that surround towns like the shanty town at the basin of Procreana. So this bulb planty thing that grows out of these, uh, this growing thing that's appeared, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with those floating ones that kind of look similar earlier on. But hold on, I think I may be wrong in that regard, because these come into play a little later. Cutting away from the world of the Delpha part of this trailer, we then get right back into the action. Cutter swoops over a WFA base, and we have this amazing shot of Desan as we fly down, and to the left, you can actually see what I believe was that hut with a map in, and the Nom Nom parked outside it, which seems to have a saddle on that other Nom Noms in this shot don't. Also, if we take our attention to the, to the bottom left, we can see a, another one of those hologram grinding rails for Cutter. And if we take our attention up a little bit, we see there is a, a big skeleton in the basin floor. Is this the remains of a Galenta or some other much larger creature? Although I say much larger, but in this next shot, we see how big these trunk boys get because my god, we really are riding these things into battle now. Also, if my memory serves me right, but I think this guy's parked in the area that you come out of in the demo footage of last year's Gamescom. I'm pretty sure that's the same base. We then transition to the shot that harkens back to that patrol we saw in the sky earlier on. But we also see a map covered, in fact littered with icons. And oh my god, just in this small top part of the map alone, I count seven Diokas just here, which it's, it's far more than I thought we would get. So this is going to be mad traveling around this map. 
Also, now pulling things together, I'm wondering if the shanty town is Palana, which was a name that we were able to pull out of the uh, screenshot scene from a computer or something before. But yes, I, I can imagine these patrols will be a, a constant occurring thing that happens throughout the game that we would have to jump at at any given moment. But in this shot that we see our Galanta, there's an interesting island off the shore, which I believe is Kazar, and it seems to have a big blue bubble around it. A little later in the sequence, we can indeed see that happening again. So my guess is that Kazar has this blue aura about it that we see at the very end of the trailer and other trailers because that's almost the protection area of it which keeps well either it's just there because of the invasion force or they always have it on because male talan <laughs> i don't know or people escaping who knows it could be used for a lot of things but yes it seems like that kazar will have this shield around it for the majority of the game i imagine also a quick spitfire round of little tiny things I found in these images. Is that a lighthouse? Very nice. Is that a lighthouse? Is that a light- No, that probably isn't a lighthouse. And also, what a lovely waterfall that we can see there just before Procreano starts. We then cut back to the, the first shot of the trailer, but now more explored. And is that a waterfall I see? Or is it just a particle thing because it disappears <laughs> straight away? Who knows? What mysterious things of Adelpha will we uncover? My goodness. But this seems to be like Cutter using one of those Yod powers that Ma alluded to. Also, I'm not sure if these are just a reskin of the robots or they are a different class, as we haven't had these mainly blue looking ones appear yet. Now, thinking back to that bulb that grew earlier, we now see it plant on the ground and its vines growing out at a rapid pace and constricting this robot. We then have a squad of Ventilope dropping down what looks to be explosives onto the remaining forces. Or just Cutter. He didn't seem very well placed. And there is another grind rail over there. I didn't think I'd see that, but I did. And we end on two shots of the interior of Kazar. And as we can see, there is indeed an energy force that does come down in between the walls of the surrounding cavern. Right, so we are now going to roll over to the B-roll footage, and this will be a rather quick one because I just want to dive into new things I spotted. The B-roll footage starts off with Cutter actually emerging out of a Doka, which is pretty cool, and a rather large one at that. But we have a nice little further look at the shantytown of Palana, which by all the visuals so far, it leads me to believe that this place will be in a constant rainfall. <laughs> kind of like the outcast city Sayana in the region of Okasanka. Now, this footage is all available for you to go and watch yourself on Planet Adelpha's channel, so definitely go over there and check it out if you haven't already. Now, over the comms, we hear that Cutter has a new voice compared to the original trailers. I spoke with the Shamaz of Amiya. And a further voice of the female Talan that Cutter is in cahoots with, which we now know the name of, Liaz. And they further go into talking about these Daoka cores and where they're found. Nemet, is he willing to help? Yeah, under one condition that I turn their Daoka back on. You will need to recover its core that was stolen by the invaders. They keep it in a nearby base. On the water, we can see a floating element of this WFA base, which again, following the pipes, leads to this very large structure. Now, if we freeze frame and have a look at the gun he shoots these objects out of, we can actually see what looks like a wooden gun. Now, Outcast players will know whose gun this is, and we've already talked about it in the last trailer. This is Uru's gun, that, that hunter from the first Outcast. This B-roll footage goes into the on-the-fly weapon modification that you can do from the pause menu. But before we flip over to this screen, we have a rather interesting one that pops up for a second. Now, I don't know how much uh, the developers wanted us to see this, but it is here, so I'm going to talk about it. Now, over on the right-hand corner, we can see a list of unlockables, bases, outposts, and collectibles. It looks like, overall, there's 13 key bases in the game, with a total of 29 outposts. There's Gork Eruptions, which actually might be these, these, these pillars of red that we see dotted around the map, because there could totally be 42 of those. They seem to be everywhere. Aurum's Trails, which I think that might be something we see a little later in this B-roll footage. Anatox Diaries, a collectible we'll find. Eshen Shrines. Skills to unlock. And Weapon Modules. 
The weapon modification scene is quite detailed and it flicks over a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to bother going into. But again, this footage is available for you to watch on your own. So if you want to get deeper into that and if that is your fancy, go for it. The other element we see in just a second is the question of full damage as Cutter jumps from one platform to another without the deceleration of his jetpack and he seems to be fine. So maybe full damage for certain heights has kind of gone the way of uh, health top ups based on objects you can collect. Again, this beautiful shot here as Cutter walks through this coral forest, we can see butterflies flying through the air. Again, another example of just how full of life Adelpha is gonna be in this game. I'm so happy to see this. While Twanha, uh, an animal that seems to be stuck in some rocks, it's, it's all just so lovely. <laughs> We can also see some, some canine based creatures here and, and one that's rather blue which I'm just going to guess is the alpha of the pack. Now whether or not killing that one will make the other scarper or not, I don't know, I'm just speculating here. But it seems that Cutter again has used Oru's gun to launch something on this alpha that has created a swarm of bugs. Now going back to that quick frame of the weapon modification, we can see this actually has a name. As schizors, which seem to be these bugs, along with a, a few other more ones we can see here that seem to be the ammo generated via Oru's gun. Next up we have an assault on what might be an outpost. We also get on the floor which looks like a way marker of types. But this outpost seems to have four turrets that surround this base, along with one of the scorpion robots which is, is great to see back in action. And this time we have a great example of Ventilope swooping over and dropping explosives, this time looking a bit more natural in their explosive look than the barrels we saw in the trailer. I can't really say for sure what's going on with these outposts as they just seem to be platforms, there wasn't anything there that signified like a destruction of it, it's just a clearing so yeah that, that might be it for them, who knows. We now get an example of what I think might be one of these unlockable trails. Although this one seemed to just do a little run around of Spires then appear at a location that was literally <laughs> a hop away from where he was. <laughs> but these rocks seem to surround a, an interesting little thing down there. We also get a lovely view of the blue waters and a, a shielded, I assume, base over there in the distance. And if we look carefully to the left there, just as it pops into view, we see that lighthouse that we saw for a, a split second in the trailer footage. This B-roll footage also gives us a, a better example of all the biomes that we can fly through. As just this trailer alone, we go from the, the rainy areas of Palana, to the green pastures, to then the coral forest, to get a bit more rocky, and then jumping back into the, the, the hugely green areas of Ema. It's all lovely to see in action. And finally, let's, let's take a bit of a closer look at this jetpack movement, as we can see Yes, while we can skirt along the surface with the jetpack to get around fast, we can also use it for boosting up. And again, it seems like it's treated like a, a sort of a, a double jump, triple jump, quadruple jump, rather than like a hold down button to just accelerate upwards for any given amount of time you deem needed. So what's your thoughts on this? Because watching it like this, it does seem a bit chaotic, but I think it might be, uh, like I've alluded to in past videos, Kind of like Just Cause 3, where we have this system of like a grapple rope, uh, a parachute, uh, a wing glider, and it's all so chaotic when you start, but in a couple hours in, it's suddenly this beautiful, really fun way of traversing. And I think that might be the same thing going into this game. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that about does it. So thank you all for watching. That was the breakdown for the most recent trailer for Outcast A New Beginning, along with some B-roll, which again can be watched on Planet Adelpha's YouTube channel. We also got some lovely new photos released along with the trailer, so I'm gonna have these playing in the background here. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't already, as there will just be more Outcast content to come. But until then, I'll see you next time under the moons. See you later.